Hey everyone, this is Matt with FlightTrajectory.com. Uh, today's lesson, we're going to be talking about air traffic control, and I'm going to just discuss some basic principles of it, and how you talk to tower, etc., and then I'm going to show you guys in Microsoft Flight Simulator um, how to use some basic air traffic control functions in Microsoft Flight Simulator. So the general concept that you use when talking to air traffic control is that you basically repeat back everything they said. Um, so think of it as you being a parrot sitting on air traffic control's shoulder. So if they, if air traffic control says taxi to runway 28, you say rock taxi to runway 28. So <laughs> that that's basically what you're going to do. So whenever air traffic control talks to you, they're going to use either your tail number or your flight number. Um, so all planes in the U.S. have what's called an N number on the tail, and it's um, basically the registration and identification number for that plane. Um, so for this lesson, we're going to say that our, our tail number is November 123 Alpha Bravo. So whenever air traffic control talks to us, they're going to use that tail number, November 123 Alpha Bravo. Now, if we were an airline, though, um, the plane would still have a tail number, but ATC is going to address us by our flight number instead of our tail number. So they'd address us as Delta 1234 or Delta 4351, whatever our flight number happens to be, and they don't use the tail number for airlines. Um, now, whenever air traffic control talks to you, they're going to start with your tail number and then tell you what to do. And then when you answer air traffic control, you're going to repeat what they told you to do, and then you're going to end it with your tail number. Um, the reason for all this being that we want to make sure that when air traffic control, you know, they're dealing with multiple planes, so if they tell one plane to do something um, and another plane responds, they want to make sure it was the correct plane that responded and that you understand the instruction. That's why we repeat it back. Um, so that's called reading back the clearances when you repeat what air traffic control told you. Also, everything in regards to aviation and air traffic control is going to use the phonetic alphabet. Um, same thing that the military uses instead of using numbers. So we don't say N123AB, it's November 123 Alpha Bravo. Um, so just you can always do a Wikipedia or a Google search to find the entire phonetic alphabet, but I'm just going to assume for this lesson that you know it or understand what I'm saying, um, and we'll move on from here. Here I have a chart of the South Bend, Indiana airport. Um, let's say that we're sitting at the uh, main ramp in the terminal building down on the, the bottom of the chart. Um, let's say that air traffic control, ground control it'll be, gives us a clearance to taxi to runway 36. What they will say is November 123 Alpha Bravo, taxi to runway 36 via Bravo November. So you're going to repeat that back and you will say taxi to runway 36 via Bravo November November 123 Alpha Bravo so we started with the instruction that air traffic control gave us and we ended with our tail number and again that's just to verify that the correct plane was reading back the correct clearance so looking at this airport diagram, and I pulled this up from airnav.com, you can get any airport diagram for any airport within the U.S. Um, they might have some for Canada too, I'm not sure about that. Um, anyways, in the upper left-hand corner, you'll see a bunch of frequencies there. There's a frequency for the ATIS, for the tower, for ground control, and for clearance delivery. Um, so the general sequence of events, the first thing that we're going to do is get the ATIS. And the ATIS is the weather information for that airport, um, and it's just an automated recording, or it um, is sometimes the controller will record it and then it just plays back on a continuous loop. So whenever you dial into that frequency 118.15, you're going to hear the weather playing over and over again. Um, and every ATIS is assigned a code, um, or rather assigned a letter. So it'll be A, B, C, D, E all the way through through Z, and then it goes back to A again. And they usually update it every hour, sometimes more often if the weather is changing. Um, so when you listen to it, it'll say ATIS information, bravo. Um, so that way you know which information you've listened to and that it's, that it's current. They also give a time on there when they read the weather. 
so from that point we're going to get a clearance from air traffic control um, and that's our route clearance and we talk to clearance delivery to do that so in, in this case clearance delivery is 121.9 when we talk to clearance we say let's for example in this flight say we're going to do a flight from South Bend Indiana to Kalamazoo Michigan so in this case we would say South Bend clearance November 123 Alpha Bravo VFR um, to Kalamazoo with ATIS information Bravo and then clearance is going to come back and they'll give us a clearance um, and a routing and altitude etc to fly, to fly. Um, I won't get too much into detail on that in this lesson um, I think it'll go a little bit more into that in uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator when I cover that part of it so another basic principle of talking to air traffic control is that whenever you talk to them you want to tell them who you are where you are and what you want for instance who am I Matt where am I Taco Bell what do I want food um, so in this case let's say that we're sitting at the main ramp uh, and we want to talk to ground control and so we're going to tell them who we are we are November 123 Alpha Bravo where we are is at the terminal and what we want we want to taxi um, and also when we talk to ground control for the first time we're going to tell them that we have the ATIS information so in this case it was ATIS information Bravo so we would say South Bend ground November 123 Alpha Bravo at the terminal information Bravo ready to taxi so we've told them who we are where we are and what we want we also inform them we have the ATIS information so from here on out you don't need to tell ground that you have the ATIS is just the on the first initial contact with them so now the uh, ground controller is going to come back on the radio and tell you November 123 Alpha Bravo taxi to runway 36 via Bravo November and here's where you get to be a parrot on their shoulder and you're going to say taxi to runway 36 via Bravo November November 123 Alpha Bravo so when we read it back we read back the instruction first and then we read back our tail number at the end to clarify that it's the right plane reading back the right clearance so usually when we're taxiing as we get close to the runway ground control will tell you to contact the tower on whatever frequency in this case it's uh, 118.9 is our tower frequency so as we get there let's say November 123 Alpha Bravo contact tower 118.9 so at that point we switch frequencies um, actually sorry first you got to acknowledge the handoff so you say contacting tower on 118.9 November 123 Alpha Bravo and then you switch frequencies now they don't know when you switch frequencies so anytime you switch you have to be the one to make the initial call up um, now if you forget often you know tower will eventually call you because they're getting impatient but um, general concept anytime you switch a frequency you're going to have to be the one to initiate because they don't know when you've switched so we switch over to tower 118.9 and now we contact the tower and at this point let's say we're on November November 3 and we're holding short of the runway okay another general concept I forgot to mention is that um, on your initial contact um, especially as you're coming into an airport you want to use your full tail number so in this case it's November 123 Alpha Bravo after that um, once air traffic control has acknowledged it then you can shorten it up to the last three letters so if, if let's say we're uh, Cessna 172 and that was our tail number we can actually call ourselves Cessna 3 Alpha Bravo so we just use the last three numbers or letters on the tail number um, and it just keeps communications a little bit shorter and more concise so it's not um, cluttering the radio frequency with too much talk so we contact tower 118.9 and we're going to call them up first and we say tower Cessna 3 Alpha Bravo ready to depart runway 36 and so now tower knows that you're there and you're ready and if they um, 
they can give you several clearances. They can have you line up and wait, which is you're going to, you're going to taxi onto the runway and then you're just going to hold there um, and wait for them to give you a takeoff clearance or they'll clear you right away. So let's just say they clear us right away. And tower, so tower tells us Cessna three alpha Bravo runway three, six fly runway heading cleared for takeoff. So like a good little parrot, you're going to say runway three, six fly runway heading cleared for takeoff Cessna three alpha Bravo. And then we go. Now a little bit after we take off, then tower control is going to switch us to departure control. Um, and then departure control is a larger area outside of the airport. And then depending on the length of the flight, we might go to a, a center control, which is center control is a pretty large geographic area. So it's basically going from small to large. You have ground control controls all the taxiing going out going on on the ground tower control clears planes to take off and land and and controls what heading they're flying in the immediate vicinity of the airport and then departure control takes a larger area from there and then center control takes the largest area from there um, so on a flight from South Bend, Indiana to Kalamazoo, Michigan we would talk to the get the aides first get the clearance um, talk to ground for taxi, talk to tower for takeoff, then we talk to departure control, and this is all South Bend, South Bend ground, South Bend departure, and then we might switch to Chicago Center, and we'll talk to Chicago Center for a little bit um, before we eventually get switched to Kalamazoo Approach, um, and then Kalamazoo Towers, we're cleared to land, and then um, after we land, then we go to Kalamazoo Ground. Um, so that's the, the general overview of air traffic control and how it works. And there's actually a pretty cool website called liveatc.net where you can go and you can punch in an airport and you can actually listen to live air traffic control um, and have the uh, all the different frequencies will be listed there and you can actually um, hear everything that's going on so you can get a better idea of... Um, what's going on and, and um, just how the phraseology works when planes are talking to air traffic control. Now there's certain things that are absolutely mandatory that you read back and other things that are optional and then other things that you just don't read back when air traffic control tells you something. So for the most critical things that we absolutely have to read back, um, when air traffic control gives you a taxi instruction and they tell you to hold short of a runway, you must read that back. So let's say looking at the uh, airport diagram that we are at the terminal and we are going to taxi to uh, runway 9 right. So they'll say taxi to 9 right via Bravo holds short of runway 36. So we're going to go up all the way and, and stop before crossing. Now that is a clearance that you absolutely have to read back. You have to read back the hold short instructions. So you say taxi to runway 9 right via Bravo hold short of 36, Cessna 3 Alpha Bravo. Other things that we have to read back is really any important direction. So if they give you an altitude, um, then you have to read back that altitude. If they give you a heading to fly, read back that heading. So those are all the required things. And there's, there's actually more, but that's just a general example of it. Um, an example of something that's optional, often when you switch from... Um, approach controller to another approach controller or center to another center they'll give you an altimeter setting um, and they'll say you know altimeter 2 9 or 9 or 2 now you don't have to read that back sometimes pilots do you'll hear them if you listen to liveatc.net you'll hear them reading it back sometimes they don't so um, that one's one of those optional ones and then another one example of something that you actually would not read back is whenever you're cleared to land tower is going to tell you the wind direction so let's say we're landing on runway 9 right. They'll say wind 070 at 10 knots, runway 9 right cleared to land. So in this case, we would not read back the wind. We would only read back runway 9 right cleared to land, Cessna 3 Alpha Bravo. So those are just a few examples. Like I said, there's more that is required, and there's you know a few other things that are not required for you to read back, but that's just to give you a general idea. So from here, let's take a look at Flight Simulator, and I'll show you a few things that you can use in Microsoft Flight Simulator with the uh, air traffic control functions.